Joining us right now, Himesh Patel, Senior Investment Analyst, Fidelity ETFs. Himesh, thanks so much for uh, joining me. No problem, um, thank you for having me. Great to me. have you, and uh, it was great to be on a panel with you. We thought it would be useful to continue the discussion and to talk about how advisors can use factors um, in their portfolios to reduce downside risk without, without going to cash, without doing all of those past types of tactics. Himesh, what are some of the ways that advisors can uh, use factors as building blocks for the purpose of managing downside risk? Yeah, so really it comes down to three specific ways that uh, advisors can actually use factors. And this has been studied in empirical research, academic studies. Um, the first one really is factors perform well over the long term. Um, and that's backed by data going back 30 to 40 years. So when we look back at the data, low volatility, quality, you know, generally defensive type factor strategies outperform by about 2% over the long period. Um, so as a buy and hold investor, without having to raise cash or make a tactical allocation of cash or equities and bonds, you can remain invested and have exposure at a, at a, at a long-term level to these factors and you'll, you'll outperform the market broadly. The second way to do it is um, through, the, through the lens of a business cycle. So right. we're in late cycle today. Um, tons of uncertainty in the markets today. Lots of dispersion. Um, you don't know where earnings are going next quarter right. or two quarters from now. So the way to play that is quality factor tends to really do well in this type of environment because you're owning companies that are stable, long-term compounders. They generate a ton of free cash flow. They reinvest that cash flow positively. And so when you're owning the quality factor in this type of environment, you're getting exposed to the best companies in their sectors and their industries. And that leads to performance over the long term. Um, in a more tactical or short-term oriented perspective, you can think about using factors in a downside market uh, protection um, framework by allocating to a low volatility factor in your portfolio construction. Right. So let's take, for example, um, growth has been really booming in the last few, uh, few years. So if you owned a growth portfolio manager or a growth mutual fund or an ETF, you would have really done well in, those, in the last few years. But if you're experiencing a market downturn or you're expecting one, it would probably be a, a good idea to add exposure to low volatility. So if you fine tune the risk exposure in your overall portfolio, you can reduce the risk in your portfolio while still maintaining the return and the alpha potential. So uh, one way to think about it is adding a 50-50 uh, mix within growth and low vol. So you're still getting the upside potential, but you're also protecting on the downside. How would the advisor go to their client and explain the tactic of introducing factors? The first question is how, how do you explain it to your client? And second of all is when is, when is the best time to make this decision? Yeah, so I think factor investing is not new to anybody. Um, we've been doing it for many, many years since the time, since the investing uh, has, begin, has begun. So when we think about factors, it's really just quantifying a characteristic or a descriptor of a company. Yeah. So let's say Lowall, for example. It's really just companies that have lower variability in their price or a lower correlation to the market. And, you know, portfolio managers have been doing that for many, many years now. Now so we just... Factors, basically, so just factors are screens. Yep. Basically, in a nutshell. Yep. A factor is just another word for uh, having your own, your, own person, your own screens for stocks. Exactly, yeah. So you're screening for value, you're screening for, for, for uh, price momentum. and book, you're screening for... Yep. Uh, so any of those individual measures can be either a single factor or part of a group of factors that make a yep. screen. Yep. And smart beta is a set of rules. And what's really driven the, the growth in factor investing and smart beta is simply innovation. You look back at the ETF industry 20, 30 years ago, and these, yeah. these kinds of strategies were simply just Wouldn't not there. It wouldn't be possible, it wasn't. It was, you were just basically investing passively in the broad market. Um, but as time has gone on and fund companies have innovated, they've um, done more quantitative research, they've, more, they've done more risk analysis, you can identify these factors and offer them in a much more efficient manner. 
Um, so think about um, the fact the products that we have on our shelf today. We have dividends, low volatility. Right, you have high dividend quality. sweep. Yeah. yeah. So these are simply just quantifying characteristics that our portfolio managers have been looking at over the past 50 years of our business and offering them to investors in an efficient, low-cost solution. Yeah, so in that respect, the factor itself is not complicated. No. These are just uh, uh, screens and, and, and uh, rules, rules-based investing. Uh, that you're that you're putting together. I think I think where in our converse, our panel, where things get complicated is is how does the introduction of uh, a, a, a single factor or a group of factors to an existing, let's say, an index, an yeah. index, uh, a passive portfolio of indexes. Yeah. How does it offset or how does it how does it uh, interact with the core? It's like taking medicines, right? In a way. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a great analogy. Introducing factors to a client portfolio is really simple. I mean, it, it really just comes down to what the investor's goals are. So if I'm a retiree and I'm, I need more income from my portfolio, you can add a sleeve of a dividend factor or a right. high dividend strategy to boost that extra yield of the portfolio. And that way you're achieving the outcome of the, of the investor. You're also exposing the client to a factor um, and you're boosting the overall return of the portfolio. What, what are some of the uh, pitfalls that you could identify? Yeah, so one of the big pitfalls is, as an industry, we have so many products available for investors to choose from. Factor investing has taken off over the last five years, mm -hmm. and there's been prolific growth in a number of ETFs or solutions that investors can choose from. One of the pitfalls is they sometimes are constructed too simplistically. Okay. And so that takes more effort on the advisor's part, on the client's part, to do a little bit more due diligence on knowing which ETF to buy or which solution to buy. And it really just comes down to how they're constructed. Um, take, for example, an equally weighted portfolio of dividend stocks. You're inherently exposing yourself to a small cap or a mid cap bias by doing that. Right. So taking a real look under the hood of what an ETF offers is, I think, an extremely crucial part of the process and one of the pitfalls to avoid uh, when you're considering factory ETFs. It helps that the transparency is, is excellent yep. on, on these uh, solutions, these ETFs. Yep. Himesh, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thanks no so much for uh, elaborating on uh, some of the points that I don't think we, we got to in the panel. It's great talking to you. Thank you very much.